how's it going? I've been going to Tiny Chat a lot lately. I mean, Google Hangouts had the option to to create public rooms back when Hangouts when, when is in its heyday, right? And uh, that was really cool. I, I enjoyed just joining, and you could search for different subjects, and people would create these, you know, these chat hangouts, video chat hangouts, rooms, so to speak. You know, of, of all these different subjects, it was really cool. I still miss that. But ch- tiny chat, you know, it, it, it fills that need for not getting out and uh, hanging out anywhere and being around people because of the pandemic, then, you know, what's the, the next best online thing that's, that's like the equivalent of if I just went into some sort of real place hangout, a bar or something, right? But it can be a little bit more intense than that. But that's, that's been pretty cool. Not all of the rooms are that great. There are some people who will just issue a ban for just the... There was one, there was one place that I went to that I got banned just because they didn't like my name. Oh, Kizum, that, that, oh, Kizumi, oh, that's, I don't like that name, and they just booted me. They let me back the next day, but, uh, just, and there are some rooms where when certain people enter them, their personalities are so, what's the right word, just, you know, aggressive. You know, they, they act like, uh, live life, what is it, 8072. They, they act like he does, you know, about everything. And it's just like, well, you know, this isn't, uh, uh, if you're trying to have a conversation and have, you know, have there be give and take on both sides, that just doesn't happen with someone that, that acts like live life 8072. So yeah, you sometimes run into rooms that are like that. I mean, I found some rooms where it's, it's people that just say, well, you know, uh, this country was founded on, uh, on violence. And, uh, if, uh, people respond to 400 years of violence and terrorism against them, then the idea of them fighting back and, uh, killing some white people isn't, uh, you know, they, they shouldn't be prosecuted for killing white people because they're just, it's just self-defense against 400 years of oppression. And, you know, rooms like that, you know, exist too. So, but, uh, oh, and then if you, if you try, if, if you're a white person and you try to have any arguments, they cut you off and then tell you that you must listen. And if you have a problem with what they say, they're going to boot you. You know, you will listen to, to, uh, this demographic. It's not quite the way they word it, but, uh, it's, it's even harsher the way that they word it. So let's just put it that way. So yeah, there's, there's some rooms I just kind of stay away from, but, uh, I mean, I didn't initially, I at least wanted to find out what the room was about and what people generally talk about there. So, and how the room is moderated, but I was just all, all of this, this stuff, I, I don't know, something reminded me of, uh, there have been, it's been rare that people have said this to me, but there have been some people who suggest that, you know, pretty much every time I'm criticizing something about the left, that I'm grifting. I hear the same complaints quite often and see the same complaints quite often on just about any video that someone is criticizing something on the left. Oops, you're grifting. And it's just like, what, saying something because it's popular? Why do you think that's popular? Why do you think? Do you think it's because uh, nobody agrees with it? Do you think it's because nobody really genuinely has that same view of, uh, of the situation? It's all big, some big storybook that they're telling? This isn't really happening because it doesn't line up with, with the narrative? I'm not trying to grift. I'm not saying something just because it's popular. And again, you know, why do you think it's popular? Just... You know, give me a good answer for that. Don't say, oh, well, it's popular because insert something with the word ist at the end here. Because it's racist, because it, it criticizes this. It must be misogynistic or sexist, be, sexist because it criticizes this. It must be xenophobic because it criticizes this. If you criticize certain things, you are automatically this horrible person. That's pretty annoying. You know, honestly, I mean, if we live in a free society, we should be able to criticize any damn thing we want. It, it still drives me nuts when people say that Trump is a fascist. I've, I've never agreed with that notion. 
I understand some of the reasons people give. You know, he has Trump has a cult following flat out. It's a peep there. As I talked about in my last video about people who think Trump can do no right. There's the other side where people think they, that Trump can do no wrong. It doesn't matter. Any mistake that he makes or something dumb that he makes, I'll say, oh, he's just playing 4D chess. Some stupid shit. Some really stupid shit. Cult following. I get that. And Trump likes to be admired. He treats those who admire him decently and treats anyone who doesn't like him and expresses that they don't like him, they're to be degraded as much as possible, as I've already said, right? There's also things like how, yes, the cages for kids were there when, you know, during the Obama administration. I don't know whether Obama's the one that started it, but it certainly was, was going during the Obama administration. Trump, though, <clears throat> gave it a zero tolerance kind of tilt on the whole thing and made it much, much worse. He probably shouldn't have done that. I, I don't know whether he really thought through what the ramifications for it were. You know, did he know that it would end up getting known that there's all these babies in cages? Or was the whole point to say, well, see, this is, this is Obama's thing, just so he can... I mean, as I've said before, it seems like Trump just hated the idea of Obama being president even before he was president. Got just, I, you know, you, we, you, we, there's many things that one could try to imagine why he just didn't like Obama from the start. Some people w would like to think, to, would like to say that it's racism. It could be racism. It might not be. There's a lot of things that it could be. But I understand why people come to the conclusion that it's racism. Oh, I don't want this black man in the Oval Office. But maybe there's a personal thing. Maybe there's something that has to do with the way business is run or, 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 you know, or maybe it's because Obama stands for the exact opposite of what Trump is as far as how to carry yourself, how to have class, how to be reasonable, you know, all, all the, the traits that Trump doesn't have. And it just pissed off Trump that someone, you know, is so looked up to for having that, you know, having th that kind of intelligence or having their intelligence be able to focus on those things and be uh, admired for it. You know, someone, someone had said in, in the comments on my last video that, and I may not be paraphrasing this very well, but I, I, I understand the concept, that the reason why so many people are upset with Trump being president is that normally... We've thought in this society that if you act like Trump, you're never going to get anywhere. This notion that uh, people like that, who are just as far as personality and the way they treat people, they're, they're assholes and pieces of shit. We, and there's people like that in all, all professions. The fact that someone like that has made it big and seemingly is actually admired for those kinds of traits. All the things that, that we, we, people generally teach their children, yes, don't act like that. And here's this guy, uh, the, the ultimate caricature of, you know, all the things, hey, don't do these things, don't treat people like this, are, are put up on a pedestal, are admired by people. It's, it's just, it bothers people. It gets to people. And, and I have to agree, it's, it's the fact that those traits didn't hinder someone in what kind of position they could be in. It's this blatant declaration that we haven't moved nearly as far forward, we haven't progressed for the better that much. It, it speaks this notion that so much of the work that so many people have done, so many millions of people have done, and all over all these years, all these decades, all this work we've done is meaningless. Because look, this person became president and they're looked up to. How did we allow someone who, who acts like this, who looks at other people like this, who looks at themselves and it, it, like this, I, I mean, he, he, someone who can never admit when they're wrong about anything. There's just, there's so many just awful traits about, about Trump, right? How did someone like that make it into this position? 
Now, one of the problems is people will ask that question, but they can't accept that some of their side is the reason why someone like Trump is in office. Some of the notions that some parts of the left and, and some, some I, I don't know what the right is, I'll just say wokeness, the unreasonableness of some of this new wokeness, again, where you're supposed to memorize a whole bunch of shit just to have a conversation with someone. You can't just try to treat someone nicely. No, that's no longer good enough. You have to memorize all this stuff and think about things in a leftward manner, right? Yeah, there, there, there's going to be a pushback to that. And part of that is Trump being elected. And perhaps we should look at the unreasonableness that comes from some, some parts of the left, especially the loudest voices, even if they're, they're not a big majority, even if they're a tiny minority, just how loud those voices are being. Maybe we should criticize some of those things. Maybe we shouldn't just label anyone who criticizes those things as a grifter. Maybe stop doing that. If you're going to complain about how dirty someone else's house is, why don't you look at your own too? And, and if, if you are ever in a position where you think your side is squeaky clean, it's the best, there's no problems with it, the moment you start to think that is the moment you need to reevaluate things. Because there's, there's never one side or the other whose house is completely clean. There's never one side or the other that has that all, all, all the way around. Oh, ours is pristine and perfect and everything looks brand new and sparkling. No side is that at any time. That's why we have two sides. Now, there's, it'd be nice if we looked at some of the, uh, the gradient between, but that's why there's two sides. There's always something to balance something else out. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We need to remember that, too. And we don't like to think about that. So there's a reason why Trump was elected. It's not, oh, Russia, Russia. You want to externalize everything. It can't be your side. Russia, 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 Russia. Even the, the new, uh, the, the laptop. Russia, 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 Russia. It's all Russia. Trump is a puppet to Russia. Really? Explain that one. Perhaps there were some corrupt business dealings with Russia. Perhaps that's happened. But to claim that he's a puppet of Russia or to claim that Russia is the reason why Trump won? That's stupid. Just fucking stupid. Maybe they perpetuated some ideas, but those aren't the main ideas that circulated. Questioning Hillary's validity, questioning her, mo her motives, just questioning Hillary... Oh, you're a Russian agent. God damn, how many times have I seen on, 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 on social media some, oh, you must be a Russian bot. Every fuck, I just, I was going to say every time, and it's like, no, it's not every time. So I've just seen it so much. It's stupid. Russia. Russia. How about Rachel Maddow uh, saying, oh, look out. Russia is going to shut down your power. Was it your power or was it... thought it was power. And you could be out there stuck in the cold and Russia, Russia, everyone, Russia. Fucking conspiracy theory bullshit. But it's okay because it's coming from the left. Yep, conspiracy theories are terrible, but Russia, 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 Russia fucking ridiculous but i don't make videos to grift okay if i talk about what's on my mind and as i've said before if i'm given new information i change my views to match that new information i talk about it i admit when i'm wrong so i'm not making this stuff to grift it's genuinely on my mind now, I'm sure some of you might think, oh, well, what got it on your mind? Is it, it right-wing propaganda? It's another, another one that's, that's, that's pretty annoying. You know? Anything, I mean anything, that doesn't match the, the left-wing's narrative, if it comes from, from something from a rightward perspective, and it's, you know, it's a news source, automatically it's propaganda. I see a right-wing bias. That's propaganda. And I'm just like, what the fuck? 
you know, you, you could be dealing with with uh, with the Huffington Post or the uh, or or BuzzFeed or you know, it could be the most left wing of left wing sites, and you're like, hey, check this out. And then when people say, well, that's kind of propaganda there. It, the, well, Huffington Post is a great source. What do you have against Huffington Post? You're not going to look at it because it's left wing? And you get all pissy over someone not liking that, and you, yet you turn around and even the slightest tilt to the right, and you'll call it propaganda. Nobody's supposed to call that out. Now, sometimes I'll look at something... I know it's propaganda. I'll look at it, you know, from the perspective, hey, hey, this is propaganda. But what bits and pieces of this, you know, can I, can I look up to make sure that whatever it is, is at least, whether they're putting it together in a deceptive manner, are the individual pieces from it factual? And I can look that up and see if it's factual. So... If you really, really want to get nitpicky about almost any news source, you could try to say that uh, almost any news source is propaganda because whatever it is that's being written is from the perspective of someone who has an opinion. So whether it's propaganda for a particular party, a particular share, set of shared notions, or someone's individual notion, something they want people to see patterns they want people to see. Okay, I I feel I criticize the right plenty. I'm on the left. When I see the right wing doing something particularly nasty outside of uh, supporting Trump, um, I do like to point it out. Right now, uh, we're, we've been so oversaturated with news about the right wing supporting Trump, defending Trump. You know, but, but some people make out Trump to be a fascist. You know, fascism being pretty much the worst thing that a government and leader can be. The worst thing. Immediately you think of, of Hitler. You know, it's the worst thing a government can be. And that's what people have labeled Trump as. And I just don't agree. That doesn't make me a fascist sympathizer. That doesn't mean I'm on the right that doesn't make me a grifter. It means I don't think that these criticisms of Trump are valid. It's just crap. There's a lot of things to dislike about Trump. But to go right for the, oh, he's like Hitler. What is wrong with you? Yes, he's a narcissist. Yes, absolutely. He's a narcissist. He's a con man. He's a bunch of awful things. He's also, he also, he... Again, he represents everything we teach ourselves not to be, and that people like him should never be awarded for his type of behavior. And yet here he is as president. Yes, I understand that, but that doesn't make him fascist. And if he gets elected again, which I think he probably will, the left needs to look at itself. Stop blaming Russia. Stop uh, blaming uh, grifters. Stop blaming racism or sexism or misogyny or xenophobia. Stop blaming bigotry and start looking at yourselves. You know, where are you being unreasonable? And if you can't see it, then you're not really paying attention and you're probably not able to look at anything from outside your own perspective, which is sad. The left needs to get a little better at that, okay? There's straw manning going on on both sides, both the left and the right. The, as I've said before, the right wing has tended to look at anyone to the left of Biden, oh, you must be a communist, or you're a, you're a dictionary socialist. And then from the left's perspective, anyone to the right of Bernie Sanders, oh, uh, it, it's it's fascism. Look out, fascism. You're you're an alt writer. If you support capitalism, you're a fascist. Well, if you don't think we need to defund the police, you're a racist. You support police brutality. Unless you agree with our conclusions and our answers, you are you are everything evil in this world. You know, and again, the opposite side. You know, if uh, 
If you believe in any sort of social justice at all, you must be a communist. If you think that uh, poor people should should receive help from the government, a uh, socialist. If you believe in in uh, uh, universal health care, oh, you must be socialist. You know any socialist programs at all? No, you you want to replace capitalism, communism. You're a communist. Worst thing ever. Stalin killed so many millions of people. Stalin, it'll lead straight to Stalin. Bullshit on both sides. But right now, okay, right now, most of the fear-mongering is coming from the left. And I know some of you don't want to hear that. But if Trump wins again, which is likely, you know, that's part of the reason... Anything that doesn't line up 100% with, with what we're saying, oh, fascism, you don't want to be a fascist, do you? You don't want to be a fascist sympathizer, do you? Then agree with everything we say, or you're a terrible person. Who are the people who have become violent just for disagreeing the most? It's not the right. Are there extremists on the right? Sure. Is, uh, is white nationalism a threat? Yeah. But it's not a threat nearly as often as what we're finding uh, coming from some of the people who declare that anyone who doesn't agree with them is a fascist. Now, is the violence usually lethal from the left? No. No, it's not. But it sure happens a lot more often. The violence sure happens a lot more often. You know, I, I never hear about uh, the right wing burning down small businesses because they're angry at something. I don't see the right wing throwing huge tantrums. You know what? I'll take that back because the right wing throws a big fit over having to wear a mask. They're not throwing a huge fit over over businesses being closed. They'll talk about that, that being important. But when it comes to the right throwing tantrums, yeah, it's usually it has to do with not, you know, they don't want to wear a mask. Oh, you're putting a muzzle on us. No, it's it's not a muzzle. It's It's for everyone's health. You can question how effective a mask is, fine, but we're trying to do what we can to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Maybe some of you think that the the coronavirus isn't nearly as much of a threat as what it's being put as what it's being uh, touted as. You know what? You could be right. Maybe it's not as bad, but it doesn't hurt you to wear a fucking mask. It doesn't hurt you to try to do social distancing. Anyway, I think I've rambled on for long enough. Thanks for watching.